Good evening. This is Sierra Stewart and Christopher Stewart with Kingdom Love Talk. Thank you guys for tuning back in. Thank you guys for subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Um, before we get into everything, um, I want to say in the, in the YouTube subs description box, we will have other podcasts that we would like you guys to listen to and su subscribe to it as well. It's going to be Impact Hour with Thomas Harris, Beauty for Ashes Talk Show with Michelle Harris, Prophetess Michelle Harris, excuse me, and um, Women with Purpose with Tanisha Peggins. That is also true that you guys subscribe and listen to. Again, it'll be in the YouTube description box. Um, but before we get into prayer, um baby yeah so how y'all doing today i hope you guys have a great week um thank you for tuning in for another episode of the kingdom love talk like my wife said episode two is about cracking the crocodile um we're defeating the spirit of leviathan in this episode last week we spoke on the new age spirituality if you haven't seen that episode go back and see that episode um, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in to this one. Um, make sure you guys hit the notification bells after you uh, subscribe to our channel so you can get the episodes. As soon as we post it, you'll get the notification and you can watch it. And, you know, you can, you can to learn the knowledge that we got to learn, you know, so right. you won't be ignorant to the devil's devices. And this is just another, another one of those spirits that, you know, haunt people's lives so much. And a lot of people don't really you know, understand it or they, um, and they understand why, um, they don't understand why, um, they act a certain way or they do a certain things. Um, so we're pretty much going to shine the light on this spirit today. So if you can bow your head so we can get into prayer, Lord God, thank you so much for waking us up this morning, Lord God. Thank you for the ability to fellowship with my wife and then listening on the podcast, Lord God, and everyone that tunes in either right now, if they're tuning tomorrow or they tune in next year, Lord God, just want to bless that soul for, for watching, yes, Lord God, God and you, learning Jesus. and being with us here today, Lord God. We just want to Thank you, Lord God, for the ability to teach your word, Lord God. And we want to come to you humbly, Lord God, and, and bow down. And thank you for your grace and your mercy, Lord God. And so with further ado, Lord God, we give your name, honor, glory, and praise, Lord God. So in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, baby. So today's episode, as my husband was saying, was cracking the crocodile, defeating the spirit of Leviathan. Well, let's get into it. What is Leviathan? Leviathan is compared to a crocodile characteristically. A lot of times God will compare using um, an animal or a um an object or just something, you know, um, that, that is very revelatory, which is beautiful and, and definitely worth studying. So you can get the full picture of what God is trying to say and what God is talking about. You know, um, it makes no sense if God is saying, describing him as a crocodile and we don't know what a crocodile is or does or hunts victims or, or anything like that. Yeah. So, um, Leviathan is pride. Uh, the Bible says that, he is the king of all the children of pride. Mm -hmm. Leviathan is a principality that has more than one head, mm -hmm. twists words, brings mourning, patient, waiting for an opportune time to strike, tries to drown his victims by causing people under the influence to speak harsh words, make demands, break covenants because they're too proud to serve, mocking, treat people with consent, or walk in defiance, challenge authority. So... Um, it's crazy that God is saying that he is the king of all the, over all the children of pride, because what is Jesus? The king of Kings, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So at this point, Leviathan is a ruling spirit, right? You know, it says he's a, he's a, he's a principality. Mm -hmm. So at this point, which King are you going to allow to rule in your life? Is it going to be Jesus or is it going to be Leviathan? Because mm -hmm. clearly we can't do two. Amen. You can't two serve two masters. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And she's right, man. The Leviathan spirit is very stubborn and it speaks in a rough tone. It's very controlling, um, religious, independent. It's a rebellious spirit. The spirit will lead you to self-exaltion, haughtiness, arrogance, lying, cursing, arguing strife and anger unyielding and it's unteachable the spirit brings much destruction leviathan will also not allow you to submit to those in authority and leviathan will make you reject healing and deliverance which is very much needed um in the body of christ 
Yeah, and he said unteachable, which was really spoke uh, because pride will allow you to be, will cause you to be unteachable. So it will cause you to not unlearn the negative things that we've already learned. We didn't learn correctly growing up all the time. You know what I mean? There's some things that we have to unlearn so God can teach you know, he has to reteach. He has to reteach us. We have to start over on milk. My mm-hmm. husband said milk to me. Amen. And that really spoke because, listen, there's babe, we're babes in Christ. We don't know everything. We think we come in on uh, pride, things puffed up. Oh, I know everything already. Oh, I already know that <laughs> Bible verse. Oh, I was gro- I was raised in church. Right. Okay, Lord. so what? Amen. Okay, so what? Well, you was raised in church, so were you taught to be Holy Spirit led? Mm-hmm. Clearly, that means God is going to tell you to do some strange things all the time, and if you have pride, you're not going to be obedient. That's a fact. You know what I mean? So that that uh, that unteachable right there, that mm-hmm. was a, one of the big ones that was right. that stuck to me because, wow, if you're unteachable, then you're unreachable. That's a fact. Wow, baby, that was great, man. Uh, unteachable. <laughs> you crazy. <laughs> All right, so um, is there anything? Okay, I'm going to no, get did. into this. Your turn. Okay, so I want to get into Job uh, 41. 12 through 13. So, um, yeah, before I get into that, I just want to let you guys know, um, for the ones that didn't know, you will find Leviathan or Leviathan being spoken of in a lot of books, um, Isaiah, um, Amos, but majority of it's, um, God spoke to Job in Job 41, and he really broke it down to Job about what the Leviathan is in the, in the spiritual realm. He gave a very physical, um, appearance detailed um you know description of the leviathan but it it was he was very much speaking in the spiritual realm so job 41 12 through 13 um says i will tell you about leviathan's legs his strength and his graceful shape no one can pierce his skin Mm. it is like armor the pride of leviathan is found in his appearance his skin and outer layer is so hard that no one can pierce his skin. His skin is like armor. This is the characteristics of those who operate in pride, as they will have a wall around them. It is the wall of defense that says, you will not get close enough to me to hurt me. This wall I put up or this skin of armor will protect me or protect you from touching me or getting too close to my heart. Most people with the spirit of pride will never truly open up to others. Their defense is to keep you away and intimidate you with fear so that you will never get close enough to their heart or to the real them. Now I have something too on 4112, which that was good, baby. Um, about the skin. Mm-hmm. I wanted to touch on that. It's, it's um difficult to contend with. Right. Um, because well, I want to start off on 12 first. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. It says, um, you know. That he has, uh, well, let me go back to it. I want, I want to emphasize Leviathan's limbs and enormous strength and graceful form. Right. Okay. Leviathan gives off or causes people to be, to have deceitful reasoning. Leviathan is a deceitful reasoner because Leviathan reasoning can seem graceful and beautiful mm. in, in a victim's mind, wow. and, but it manifests that pride manifests as strength and, and courage. Yeah. And um and, and in Job 41 13 it said who can strip off Leviathan? Strip off in Hebrew means gala. That means banished or removed or revealed. So who can reveal Leviathan? Who can strip off re- Leviathan? I think it's amazing that God is asking these questions of Job. Like mm-hmm. who can do this? Who can do that? Because he wants Job to reflect, mm-hmm. you know, on what on what this is and right. who this is in operation right. and just give him an idea of what's of what's going on and what type of what type of things that is being content with contended with here right. so there's no way we can cast out pride with pride you can't be haughty and expect to banish your king right. you need deliverance because the bible says that he is a a king of over all the children of pride. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's another reason. Let's talk about the the crocodile here. The 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 strength in a crocodile, or the the skin, the uh-huh. tough skin in the crocodile. Um, and I kind of want to keep going back to the crocodile so the people can get the picture, mm-hmm. you know, of of what God is saying. Like, good gracious, that thing <laughs> is crazy, man. Like that's crazy when God compares, man. It gives you such 
pictures. Yeah. And 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 it's and it's and it's very, you know, when I think about it, I get revelation because I know I've dealt with the spirit of pride and the spirit of um the Leviathan a lot throughout my life. And you know, just the description of you know his strength and his graceful shape and his his skin that's like armor. It describes it described me when I was out of the body of Christ, when I was young and I was just coming up. And, you know, um, I would say I, I had a way with words. Um, what, uh, what 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 they say down south, you know, they would say, you know, oh, you got the gift of gab or whatever. And, and honestly, that was just a way to survive, you know, um, just right. being able to talk my way wow. out of things and, you know, um, the, the graceful way I would maneuver out of situations without being caught. And, you know, just my, my skin, you know, you know how we say, Oh, we got tough skin. Mm -hmm. You can't say nothing to hurt me. This, that, and the third. Well, in, in fact, that's, that's a, that's a form of pride. Mm -hmm. So if someone can't say anything to get you to feel any kind of way, what are you, why are your defenses up? Right. Like, why, why are you, you know, why are you so tough? You know, because I and I can say that now because now that I'm a you know in the body of Christ and I and I live for God now you know things do hurt you know my skin isn't as tough as it used to be because you know you I can hear things in church and it will penetrate and right. I will cry because you know it, it it's it's revelatory you know the word of God it's it the the Bible says the word of God is like a two edged sword it is supposed to pierce it is supposed to hurt it is supposed to separate your flesh from your spirit right and if you're dealing with the you know that brings deliverance in itself and if you're dealing with pride you know in, in the spirit of Leviathan it rejects healing and it rejects deliverance so of course when people right. tell you things you won't be able to you know resonate with it and heal from it. But you said something too. You said um, it it comes so you can't you can't words can't hurt or words can't do anything. It's a defense mechanism. You know what right, I mean? It, right, it right. makes his home in per in a person and people in regions that are hurt or that have been hurt and that walk in fear. Uh -huh. So that was that was something that I wanted to point out there exactly. too that Amen. you made a good point about. Amen. Right. Yeah. So the goal of Leviathan is to kill your dreams, steal your hopes, and keep you from receiving deliverance. Keep God fighting against us because the Bible says that God resists the proud. So resist right. means Amen. to fight against. Mm -hmm. So if we're fighting against God because we got all these proud, we got all this pride or Leviathan is ruling in our lives, mm -hmm. then God isn't working with us because God don't operate in pride. Right. You know what I mean? Um, so... Leviathan is a spiritual terrorist. Mm -hmm. In Job 41, 14, it says, who can open doors of his face around his teeth? Yeah. There is terror. Uh -huh. It brings terror and dread to your life. It's violent and destructive. Mm -hmm. That's what Leviathan is, violent and destructive. Imagine a crocodile when it gets its victims. Right. They're fearful when they see him, when they, right. when they see a crocodile. <laughs> I couldn't imagine seeing a crocodile and just stand there. You right. know what I mean? Right. Like. Right. Oh no, it's so much terror and destruction. Imagine if for what a crocodile can do to you. Right. And you're even if you do survive the crocodile attack, imagine the destruction that it will have right. in your life if in it gets mental. a hold of you. Right, you know right, what right. I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, you spoke about Job 41 14. Um, I actually got something on that too. It says, uh, who can open the doors of his face with his terrible teeth all around? So the Leviathan's face is so fearful, intimidating. Again, is it that's another you know defense mechanism that it puts up to invoke fear upon all those who dare to approach it, even right. to look upon the face of someone operating under the spirit of is dreadful. Um, right. Sometimes you will see this spirit in operation when someone is speaking; their eyes are haughty and piercing, and they never smile to encourage others. Any comments that are made from this spirit are normally done in a manner where it is intended to chew you up and spit you out. The spirit gives no mercy. Right. Individuals operating under the Leviathan spirit feels as though nothing you say is worth listening to. This spirit considers itself superior over all others and that it is always right. People operating under this spirit will seldom repent or ask for forgiveness. Right, and that's that's a that's not something that you're able to do, which is what, which is another reason why God would resist that. You know Amen. what I mean? Because an unrepentive spirit, right. let's, let's, you're unrepenting. Right. How can God move when there's no repentance? Amen. That's you know fact. what I mean? There's no repentance at all. And how can, how can God, how can God move when there's no unforgiveness? Amen. 
You haven't forgive. Oh, I'm too good to forgive. I don't want to forgive you them. Must forgive. I can't forgive them. <laughs> they did this to me. They did that to me. I'm not gonna forgive them. I'm not weak. I'm not weak. You know what I mean? Amen. Like, no, Amen. you're weak if you're prideful because you're not able to to look and deal with the things that's going on mm -hmm. that's causing you to be that way. Mm -hmm. You don't want to get delivered. Right. You know what I mean? You don't want to do the things necessary for your life. That mm -hmm. makes you weak. Mm -hmm. So a prideful person, even though it, it, that's why it says deceitful reasoning, because it seems as though you're strong and courageous, right. but you're really weak and hurting exactly. and you need deliverance. You, you need deliverance. That's a fact. That's a fact. So in Proverbs 29 and 23, it says pride ends in humiliation. Wow, humility brings honor. So that's a little tad bit uh, Bible nugget for you guys. Oh, you got that? Oh, yeah. No, I just wanted to throw that out. Okay. Well, I wanted to, uh, I have a, a few more characteristics here. Um, hopefully, maybe you'll be able to dip in on. For sure. So um, pride, you cannot penetrate. The Bible says his strong scales are his pride shut up as with a tight seal. Uh -huh. One is so near to another that no air can come in between them mm -hmm. joined together or clashed together and can't be separated. Mm -hmm. That was Job 41, 15 through 17. And I want to kind of pinpoint or, or pay attention on the word air here. Yeah. When they talk about air, it's mm -hmm. talking about life or the Holy the Spirit. Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can't move. So I want to talk about pride, religious pride. Mm -hmm. A uh, spiritual pride in church. You want to know why the Holy Spirit can't move? Uh -oh. uh, no one wants to worship. Leviathan don't want to worship. Leviathan uh -oh. don't want to praise. Leviathan don't want to pray. Uh -huh. Leviathan is not. It's the Bible said, who can make supplication unto thee? You know what I'm saying? Right. The, the Leviathan does not want to pray. It's not a praying spirit. It mm -hmm. wants to keep you from prayer. So if your prayer life, if you don't want to pray and your prayer life is jacked up, mm -hmm. check your heart for pride. Amen. You know what I mean? It if makes you, you fall if, asleep when you're reading the Bible too. Right. So if you don't want to uh, if, if you can't feel like you can't, the Holy Spirit isn't moving. What's going on in the atmosphere? What's happening? Pride may be, you know, people get popped up with pride. Oh, i got too much knowledge. I know too much knowledge. I, oh, I'm apostle this. I'm prophetess this. I'm right. uh pastor so-and-so. I got just like Satan. I got a Benz. I got so much money. My church is the biggest church on the block. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? All of that. God's not operating in that. And if God, and if, if you have leaders who are operating in pride, what how in the world can they lead the sheep correctly? How can they how can you get deliverance if you need it? No, everybody needs to sit down and mm -hmm. they need some deliverance and the Holy Spirit needs to be able to move and do it what he needs to do. And the only way that's going to happen is if there's humility, right. you know, so that's why it's OK for people to sit down. Sitting down is all, not always a bad thing. Sitting down means you just need to get poured into and you need to get some healing. Amen. We're human beings. That's a fact. We're human beings. You know what I mean? Sometimes we ain't always going to do the right thing. Sometimes we going to fall, but it's okay for us to get back up. Mm -hmm. Pride will not allow us to, to get, get back, back up. up. Amen. Facts. It won't. Exactly. So, um, he has sudden, bind, sudden blinding attacks. In Job 41, 18, it says his sneezes mm -hmm. flash forth light in his eyes like eyelids of the morning. Mm -hmm. Sneeze is a sudden expulsion of breath. And the flash in Hebrew in this text means boastful. Mm -hmm. It moves. So let's read it again. His sneeze, violent and boastful right. toward victims. You know what I mean? So he's violent and boastful. That's, these are the characteristics. Mm -hmm. Pride is violent and boastful. Think about pride. Think about, think about in the hood. We're going to go there. Think about in the hood. <laughs> you got people that's been hurt. You got poverty. But you got people around here that are, that are. oh, you ain't going to come up on me and do this and that. You're not going to run up on me and do nothing. I'm going right. to do X, Y, Z to you. I'm going to be violent with you. Right. And then once I'm violent with you, I'm going to boast about it. You got all these rappers today. Oh, I done killed them. I done killed them. I done shot them in his dome. I done did whatever else they right, thought. Right, right. And they're boasting about it. They're boasting about their violence. That is pride. That is the spirit of Leviathan. And yet this is something that is casted and put out and put out and put out 
to the youth, to the people, to our ear gates, to our eye gates, what we're seeing and we're taking this stuff in. Right. You know that they're in shows, they're naming characters, Leviathan, they're putting it out there mm -hmm. so we can accept right. because, because ultimately that's what people want is to be accepted. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. So the things that they're putting out there we're accepting, but it's not the things that we should be accepting. It's the things that we ultimately are going to need deliverance from. But think about it. Why wouldn't this be an end time spirit? Why wouldn't this be That's if it's keeping people from deliverance? Mm -hmm. You, There's no deliver. There's no getting through to pride. Mm -hmm. There's no talking to pride. You know what I'm saying? There's no talking to Leviathan. So it's so hard Ooh, to get good, deliverance there. That's a good, that's a real good point. Right and that's there. why it's so hard to get through some people in the hood right. because of the pride that they have. Mm -hmm. They don't want to look soft. Mm -hmm. They don't want to look right, right, a right. certain type of way in front of certain, another person or another, mm -hmm. or, it's very seldomly does do people get out of those situations that they're in mm -hmm. because of the pride or how right. they may be viewed mm -hmm. or how they may, or, or how they seem or because they a hard head makes a soft butt. Yes, it do. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because of those reasons. So I, that's that's crazy. Yeah. So crazy. the spirit of Leviathan hardens your heart to embrace people and the things of God. When your heart becomes hardened to the word of God, it is not able to take root in your heart. Your heart becomes rocky ground for the word of God. So it can't take root. You know, like in Matthew 13, um, but the story about the farmer and what about the seed that fell on the rocky ground? It wasn't able to produce a crop, a good crop to be able to sustain. Right. So that's what the, the spirit of Leviathan does. It wants to harden your heart. Like my wife was just talking about um, in the hood, you know, you hear that a lot. Oh, you ain't got no heart. You ain't got no heart. You're not hard. So, but if your heart is hardened, nothing will be able to penetrate it. And if nothing can be able to penetrate it, then you won't be able to, to accept the things that you need for your healing. And mm -hmm. that's what Leviathan does to your heart. It hardens your heart. So when someone does come with you for the word of, with the word of God, yes, it goes through your ears, but it never lands on your heart to be able to, to, to land and plant and Roots. grow and root right. and flourish, you know, and to become something that's greater than pride because, you know, pride, it, it does, it wants to block your steps of elevation. He, um he prevents you from going further um, by warring against you with pride, fear, intimidation, doubt, worry, and all those things that is not a part of the kingdom of God. So many Christians spend their whole lives stuck there, you know, at a brick wall because they feel like, you know, they feel like they're stuck. But it's really the the spirit of Leviathan that's preventing them from moving forward because they feel like, okay, maybe my ministry isn't realizing that I have this gift right. or that gift or I can teach that or I could have did that better. So a lot of people in the body of Christ deal with the spirit of Leviathan because they feel like they're not being, you know, acknowledged how they should be in, in all fact and reality. That's right. just the spirit hardening your heart. To the to the word of God and not it's only not the word us. of God, the people of God that's actually trying to help you. Because if you are in a church, I guarantee you the people there aren't trying to harm you, especially if they're moving by the Holy Spirit and they are moved by God. They're not trying to harm you. Maybe they haven't elevated you to a certain point because they feel like you know you may need protection from the Leviathan spirit or the Jezebel spirit or you know other spirits that you know are principalities that want to you know you know rip apart the body of Christ. You know, sometimes, like my wife said, we do need to sit down. Right. Because sometimes we do get in situations where we either fall short or we get into a situation where, you know, something happens where, you know, we didn't really listen to the Holy Spirit or we did something that wasn't Holy Spirit led. And, so, you know, sometimes, you know, you don't want to be, you know, bleeding on your sheep. If you know you're right. in, a, in a position where you're teaching Amen. and you know you fall short, you don't need to go back out that same day and try to teach something. Right. Because, you take know, you yeah, take a second, take a step back, you know, uh, reconcile, you know, get, get, get into your prayer closet, talk get to God, healing. you know, get some healing before you go out there and try to, you know, deal in deliverance. Maybe a transfer of spirits might happen. You know, that's right. why sometimes we do need to sit down because these spirits, you know, they, they, they know more about the word of God than any one of us because their master Satan was there when God was 
making the whole thing. So right. you know, the, the, Satan knows the word better than any of us you know, ever stupid. will. He's not stupid. You don't think he's teaching his, you know, his little spawns and his minions how to get to us. You know, you know, people right. in the congregation deal with all of these spirits all the time. Right. That was powerful, Amy. Is it uh, one thing that you said about um about about pride when you talked about sitting down? A lot of times uh people and and now i'm going to in the in the church too though it was happening because it just doesn't happen outside of church to unbelievers or or to people who just don't go to church Amen. you know it's it's inside of this body of christ too you know and you know <laughs> body of christ we got to get this right because if we don't we will be judged um we will be judged harshly you know what i mean so um the burning Leviathan burning words and a uh, vision clown and smoke. So, and Job 19 through 21, he talks about it and let's hear what it says. It says, lightning leaps from its mouth, flames of fire flash out, smoke streams from its nostrils like stream from a pot heated over burning rushes. Its breath would kindle coals for flames shoot from its mouth. And let's talk about that. You know what I mean? It says, out of his mouth go burning torches, sparks of fire. You hear that's like Leviathan brings confusion and throws fiery dots. You know what I mean? You got people that's in pride there uh, saying harsh words to you and, and speaking things at you. And you got all these fiery dots being thrown at you. Mm. He's not, Leviathan is not nice. People that deal with pride are not nice. They're not, they're not, they're not gentle you know we know the fruit right. of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is gentleness and kindness oh, wow. leviathan is the opposite of that leviathan it says think about that you know like those cartoons when it says the nostrils smoke steams you know uh, when you are right, so mad and so team. angry that yeah. the, the smoke comes out of your nostrils you know imagine that imagine a person of that nature or that they get mad that the smoke starts coming out of their ears right. imagine that or Imagine how that is. You know what I mean? Imagine the burning flames, you know, words so hot, words so vicious and so mm -hmm. violent and so right. mean that they're just spewing out of your mouth like that. A person that has pride speaks like that. Now imagine a leader like that where somebody has to sit down and all they're doing is speaking that from the pulpit. At That's you. crazy. You know what I mean? All that pride coming through, all that spiritual pride coming through. Oh, you think that you're that? I'm not that. I'm the only pastor in here. I'm the only prophetess in here. Right, right, you know right. what I mean? That's mm -hmm. crazy. And I, I think I love how God does that. Um, I love how God does how he characterizes that and by comparing. Right. I love how he does that because it really paints a good picture. Did you have anything on that, baby? Um, yeah. Well, not nothing on that, but I did um the Holy Spirit dropped something on me. Um in the Bible it says it speaks about the Leviathan, you know, swimming through the waters, you know, and it's and it's destroying ships. Hmm. Shipwreck. Shipwrecks. Wow. And 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 the Holy Spirit said, that's what the Leviathan does because it causes shipwrecks. Right. Not only in your spiritual life, but in your in your in your in your personal life. Um, it comes in and it wants to destroy not only the person, but it wants to destroy the relationships. And, and something also mm. else popped in my mind is in the bible it says you know it destroys ships and what's on ships and the journey in the journey what's, what's what's on the ships the fishermen wow and we're supposed to be the fishermen of men we're supposed to right right so we're supposed to get you know bring people to christ you know come with us right. and in the leviathan <laughs> wants to come in and stop that from happening he wants to destroy our ship it wants to destroy our journey um to god this is why we must stay in our word. This is why we must continue to pray without ceasing. This is why we must, you know, continue to be humble before God because this spirit wants to come in and stop our journey 
to to everlasting life you know this right. this spirit wants to do its father's bidding and that's to steal kill and destroy and send us right to hell with him and them and all the rest of the spirits which is why our discernment must be at an all-time high especially right. when dealing with people that that have the spirit of revive then we must be able to discern when they're not being genuine when they're not being you know holy spirit led right. when when we must be able to recognize when they they're trying to lead us astray so you must stay in your bible you must uh, stay prayed up and always listen to God because he will bring that confirmation that you need, especially dealing with these demonic spirits. Right. And Leviathan is also stiff neck and stubborn. Uh, the Bible says in Job 41, 22 through 24, in his neck lodges strength and dismay leaps before him and Im immovable. His heart is hard as stone, even as hard as a lower millstone. And I know my husband was already talking about how hard Leviathan heart is. You know what I mean? And that's a manifestation of pride is, is stiff neck and stubbornness on not able to be led. And we need to be led by the Holy spirit. Mm -hmm. If not, who's leading you? That's haughtiness right there. Right. You know what I mean? And if their heart is hard, nothing can get through it. Nothing can penetrate. And, and that makes me, that lets me know, you know, um, I don't know why God always leaves me here. The like the Hebrew Israelites. Think about it. Um, like every time uh, you're talking about um, ta truth comes forth, it's twisted. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And there it goes. Leviathan is twisted, coiled. You know right, what I mean? Right. That's what that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Twisted and coiled. It's like it twists the word of God mm -hmm. and makes it fit something. A different narrative you know right. what i mean right, right and then so god is taking me here mm -hmm. um that when you don't submit to what they're saying right now there's the violence and the anger well you're stupid well, you're dumb you're right how can you how can you say that mm -hmm. uh that we're going to be the ones we're going to be the ones in heaven getting worshipped by the white people how and ultimately this is all supposed to be about god Right. You know what I mean? Uh, this is all <laughs> supposed to be about God. It said the angels worship God in heaven right. on earth as it is in heaven. As it is you in think heaven. in heaven, the angels are being worshiped or the people there is being worshiped by all. other races? No, no. We're worshiping the one true God. Exactly. We're loving on God. Mm -hmm. We're being happy by God. You think and then you're saying this, that that in heaven, mm -hmm. that that there's going to be people that are suffering. Right. Exactly. How? That's not going to happen. Mm. That is pride. You're taking pride. Stop taking pride is in 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 race. Right. Stop taking pride in race. Be humble. Be humble. Be children of God. Amen. You know what I mean? That pride gotta stop. Mm -hmm. That pride ain't cute. It's not. That pride is unpenetrable. Mm -hmm. You can't Obviously. get it. Yeah. You can't get in and, and you hear you can't get it. You can't poke it. <laughs> but there's something that can. Amen. And it's the word of God. Right. That's why it wants to keep it out. I know it was crazy when it was talking about the nostrils and the sneeze because mm -hmm. it breathes like it sneezes a fourfold. It said sneeze is a, a, a um. I, let me go back to it because that's going to bring me my revelation because God is God brought that back to my remembrance. When I looked up sneeze, uh, it said that it was a sudden involuntary expulsion of air from the nose and mouth due to irritation. OK, mm. so wow. air represent the Holy Spirit. And if you sneeze, it's like you're disturbing the air. Right. Trying not to yeah. let it allow it to get in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not allowing the Holy Spirit to get in. Yeah. So you sneeze and it, it says his sneeze exposes violent and exposes the air. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't want even the nostrils. Think about it, the nostrils on a crocodile are open. Right. So it doesn't want to still allow it to get in. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that's the thing that even if it does get in, it's pushing it right back out, pushing it right back out. And that is dangerous, man. That's a dangerous place to be in because God is going to deal with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so it releases fear in Job 41, 25. It talks about how he releases fear and wrath and wants to puff up our heart. It's crashing um, in the verse means 
shabur, which ruining or shattering or bewildered is in, in Hebrew is shata. It means to sin. So Leviathan wants us to sin in pride and leads us to other sins right. because pride comes before the fall. Amen. Yep. And it brings forth death and leaves behind a trail of destruction from the havoc that is already caused. And Leviathan is fierce in battle. According to Joel 41, 26 mm -hmm. through 29, it indicates that the difficulty to defeat is not impossible. It's just difficult to defeat. To, to defeat. So I wanted to go there and um, read 41, 26 through 29, it says, no sword can stop it. No spear, dart, or uh, javelin. Iron is nothing but straw to that creature. Mm. And bronze is like rotten wood. And then it says, arrows cannot make it flee. Stones shot from a sling are like bits of grass. Clubs are like blade of grass. And it laughs at the swish of the javelins. And let's wow. just take a look. That means the way that you're fighting with pride, uh -oh. all that, I bind you in the name of Jesus. I do this. I do that. Don't get me wrong. The weapons of our warfare aren't carnal, but they're mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. But if you're prideful, all that, what you're doing is not working. Right. The only thing that's going to work to dismantle pride and to defeat pride mm -hmm. is to humble yourself. Amen. And then once you humble yourself, mm -hmm. God will do the fighting for you. Right. You know what I mean? Because God now has to go in and deal with mm -hmm. deal with the mind. Leviathan works on the mind. Like Leviathan is not like rejection and lust, whether it works on the soul, but it works on the mind. It's a principality. It wants to keep you in pride. Right. You know what I mean? And as a matter of fact, the reason why I say about rejection and lust and things like that is how it works on the soul is because a lot of times pride comes is a result of rejection or crazy. is a result of being hurt or uh, is a result of pain or is a result of poverty or or hard times or is a way now i'm going to walk in it's this because mm -hmm. i have gone through this or right. and i don't want to deal with with this or that Amen. so that's when pride comes in Amen. You know what I mean? That's and pride fact. can rule over regions. I'm talking about regions. There's some things we can't dismantle when it's a region thing. Hmm. Sometimes it's going to take the, well, not sometimes, but yeah. it is going to take the move of God mm -hmm. to be able to come in. Right. I know it says that a sword can't penetrate, but the word of God can penetrate. That's exactly. why it's important for us to humble ourselves so it can get in us, mm -hmm. so it can deal with it, what's to do what it wants to do, because the, the sword of God can deal with anything. That's, a fact. That's why he's asking Job this. Who can do this? Who can do that? Who can do this? I want you to meditate on who can do it. Mm -hmm. You can't do it, right. but I can do it. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. So it caused us to be unable to humble mm -hmm. and unable to yield to the word of God and mm -hmm. unable to submit mm -hmm. and not able to repent. Amen. And that's crazy. It's haughtiness, arrogance, mm -hmm. egos. Right. Think about it. You got all these celebrities, got these alter egos that they set up not and the everybody, the Sasha fierce and everybody. Oh, and I don't Lord. care. I don't care who come against me on this because it is what it is. Amen. It's truth and it's truth. And I'm going to say it. That Sasha Fierce alter ego, mm -hmm. that daggone Nikki and Roman, that Nikki Minaj alter ego, oh, the whole Usher Raymond, um, you know, the whole all of that <laughs> stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? You got yeah, Usher, right. then you got Usher Raymond, yeah. then you got all that extra. Like, nah, we not doing that. And then all those alter egos, there's so more. If you look into them, they come out with, I mean, you got Future, then you got Future Hendrix. You know what you got, I mean? You got P. Diddy, you got Puff Daddy, you right. got Sean Combs, you got Dr. Love. He got a lot of them. Right. You got all of that. You got Jay-Z. You got Jay-Z, and that's what the wife and brings. But you got Jay-Z, then you got Hove. And then you wrong there because now you calling yourself God. There's only one Jehovah Jireh and it ain't you, Jay-Z. So sorry. You not, it's not it. Amen. So you know what I mean? Pride will cause us to do that. Pride will cause us to puff our own self up like we somebody when really we're servants Amen. of Christ. That's what we are. And that's what we should be. That's Ooh, that was fire. The fire of God. Amen. <laughs> Lord have mercy. <laughs> Hey, I mean, you funny. <laughs> but no, I just want to I want to backtrack to um 
to what she was saying about the doors and the opportunities for um the Leviathan spirit to enter. She mentioned um rejection and also um lust. Mm-hmm. Um being doors for the Leviathan spirit or pride to come in and kick in. So we all know um just a couple of um examples. So we all know those guys um from school, middle school, high school. <laughs> they was little, they was scrawny, they was ugly, blah, 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 blah. blah. <laughs> now I, you gotta go there because this is rejection. You know, these guys get right. rejected in, in high school and, and, and stuff like that. And Come they grow through. up, they go to college, they get a good job, blah, blah, blah this, that, the and the Navy. third. They go to the Navy, you know, they get a little money, this, that, and the third. Now, promoted. yeah, yeah, yeah. They getting promotions, <laughs> all of this, you know. And and now it's like the pride kicks in because of the rejection was already there. Now the Leviathan spirit can come in and say that, oh, 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 so now you don't want me now. I mean, you want me now, but you ain't want me back then, uh-huh. you know? And now you now now they're getting all these women. Now they're kicking it to the homeboys uh-huh. like, yo, I got this one, that one, that one, this one, that one. They all text right, me, Mike they Jones. all come. Right, exactly, <laughs> right, right, right. And now, you know, since that, that, that rejection has led to the Leviathan being able to come into your life. Now you're prideful. Now you're boastful. And then, and also it goes with the lusting as well. You know, now, now, you know, you might, okay, check this out. So a lot of men these days, they, you know, I got this woman want me, that woman want me. They all want me. You feel me? Now they all on me. So now, you're sleeping with all these women and now the lust kicks in and now you're prideful because now you're bragging about all of these women that you're sleeping with, you know? So any other little door that can open can becomes a big entrance to many spirits, especially when you're dealing with sexual spirits, but we're not going to really get into that sexual spirits right now because we're talking about Leviathan. That's another episode for another day. Also. So go back to being able to humble yourself the real reason or the real way to get away from this spirit. So in order to receive freedom and deliverance from this, it takes the spirit of humility to do that. So yes, indeed, a person can be free um, when they humble themselves. The scriptures tell us that we are to humble ourselves. We never want to pray for God to humble us because that prayer will require the stone to fall on us and not us falling on the stone. And whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken. But on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. So wow. we Powerful. want right, we want to humble ourselves before right. God because if God humbles us, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. And that is something that wow. we don't want to do. We don't want God to humble us. You know, he humbled uh yes, he, he humbled will. Noah. Right. When, he, when he told he, Noah to yeah. do something. Yeah. And Noah didn't listen, that man got swallowed by a well. You know, um, right. So, you know, those three <laughs> days, you know, was his humbling. And you see what he did when he got out. He he went over there. Yeah, he so, did. you know, we, we don't want God to humble us. We want to humble ourselves before God. That was powerful, babe. That was that was good. Now I, I learned a whole lot in that. That was crazy. Thank you. Yeah, go crazy, Glory Lord. To God, man. Amen. <laughs> yeah, because when we humble ourselves, we receive God grace. Amen. You know, um, according to First Peter, um, one thing I had to go there because I, I went to somewhere else, but when he said that the Holy Spirit just took me to a whole nother place Amen. in first Peter, first Peter five, five says in the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of your elders and all of you dress yourselves in humility Amen. as you relate to one another for God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. See, we up, are up a gut. We are. Lord, we are up against God's opposition when we don't humble ourselves. But when we humble ourselves, we now can receive God's grace. Amen. You know what I mean? And that's amazing because that's what's going to get us through everything Mm -hmm. is God's grace, man, and Mm -hmm. his mercy. So thank God for that. And the spirit behind media manipulation is pride Leviathan too, because it twists words. That's a fact. Um, So yeah, when we don't become humble, we become disobedient. And without obedience, who can please God? We can't, we can't please God. You know what I mean? So, so this is a battle that the Lord fights for us when we take the, uh, the posture of, of humility. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Scripture uh, refers to Isaiah 27, one, nothing um, it says, 
the Lord will punish this fleeing serpent and kill the dragon who lives in the sea. Mm. And then Psalm 74, 14 speaks of God crushing the heads of Leviathan because we can't battle Leviathan in our flesh. Mm -hmm. um, but the temptation is for us to rely on flesh in warfare, right. um, you know, in ways, but we can't take pride in our spiritual warfare skills. Um, pride in any area of our life can hinder our effectiveness in destroying strongholds. Um, it's, it's pride in any area of our life, not just our job, not just spiritual. It could be beauty in your beauty. Mm -hmm. It could be in anything. You know what I mean? I've seen people in school joking on people for being a certain type of way mm -hmm. and then or being fat and then they or or some type of way or, or not or being, you know, overweight right. or or too skinny. And then they grow up mm -hmm. and then their looks ain't last. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, so right, right. not to be mean, but just to say like you got to be careful with that thing because it's, it's not like if God, like you said, if God got to humble you, you know, Hey, right. so we, we have a measure of pride in our carnal nature, but when the Holy spirit is dealing with us about pride in some area, or when we see pride in our own and don't cry out for the grace of humility, we're walking in disobedience. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says we have to have a readiness to revenge all disobedience. And when your obedience is fulfilled. So, God is give he, he gives grace. And the more we seek to walk in obedience in the word of God, the more effective we will be in spiritual warfare. So, you know, that's important. Amen. You have anything else, baby? Uh, yeah. So um, the last thing I wanted to talk about um, was the, the Leviathan spirit and how it attacks covenants in marriage. Yeah. So, wow. Um, Leviathan is also a covenant breaker. Many business partnerships and marriages suffer from spiritual attacks of Leviathan because Leviathan will keep, well, we will not keep a covenant. A marriage will not survive if the husband or the wife is operating in the spirit of pride and right. refuses to submit themselves to one another. Mm. Marriage is about working together and many times humbling yourself to the other spouse during arguments. Leviathan will be wrong in a disagreement and because it is stiff necked and stubborn, it will not change. Right. Without covenant in the lives of believers, there is no peace. There is no prosperity. Uh, there is no healing or protection from the enemy. That's good that you said that because now I'm going to talk about our marriage, if you don't mind. Oh, um, let it play. It is what <laughs> I'm it sorry. Is. <laughs> well, we, um, we, my husband and I, you know, we were together for a while. We haven't actually, we've been married, but when we weren't married in our relationship, we, he, like I said, he dealt with pride and I dealt with pride. You know, when we had some issues going through and then I would let him know like, yo, something wrong with you. You know what I mean? And he would be like, like, ain't nothing wrong with me. Man, like, you know I what I mean? I, I'm going to keep it real. I had the Leviathan. I'm talking about the one they was talking about in Job 41. <laughs> I had that one right there. No, nah, for real though. And I and I had it for so long. I had right. it for so long. And um, and that's the thing though. I realized it. And that's and that's where you have to, you, that's where you have to come to, to realization with yourself that, hey, look, man, this, ah, Got to deal with right. This ain't right. But like, his <laughs> it, and the thing was, it was so hard. I had no firsthand uh, in dealing with it because it was so hard for me to get through. I would times I just be like, yo, for real, <laughs> I'm getting ready to punch you right <laughs> in your face. You know what I mean? Because you're right, gonna get yeah. these hands. But come on though, that was my pride too. Right. You know what I mean? I couldn't get through to him, and he couldn't get through to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it was like a battle. It was like putting two magnets together that just wouldn't go, Amen. you know, because he had pride. And then because he had pride, I'm like, Oh no, nah, see, I was raised on women. You know what I mean? No dads was around for me other than my, on my uncle or my, or my granddad, you know? So my grandma was like, yeah, I've raised y'all. I've did this. And my mom's like, I did this. Y'all turned out fine without anybody. And now I'm like, okay, for real, for real, you're here, but I don't need you here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's good that you're here. I love you, but I don't need you here. I can make it shake on my own. Come on, women. I can make it shake on my own. I don't need a man. Oh, I don't need the, I don't need you. When the Bible clearly states that 
we are the helper of our husbands. You know what I'm saying? We are so supposed to, to submit to our husbands as he submits to God. He wasn't submitting to God. I wasn't submitting to him. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? That's and that good. right there was off. It was out of order. Mm -hmm. And it was all Leviathan. And it was all operating in pride. Mm -hmm. And we had to deal with that. But I know firsthand how hard it was to talk to him. And then how hard it was to talk to me. Because after a while, I was shut down. I'll be like, look, for real, for real, I don't care. And, I, and not, not only what... My pride manifested in stubbornness. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking to you. Don't talk to me. Silent treat me. I'm not silent treat me. I'm not talking to you. I don't want to talk about it. We're not talking about it no more. Straight like that. If you keep doing whatever it is, I'm going to go back to being my independent self. And that's just on you. If you want to be in your pride, I'm going to be in mine. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's how it was. So marriages, it pride, this Leviathan does not want us to keep covenant with each other. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? But it's clear that God is the winner here because we are in covenant and we, God. Yeah, we love God. You know what I Amen. mean? That's and God fact. is the head of our lives and he's submitting to God. And I'm submitting to him. Mm -hmm. We're all submitting to God. You know what I mean? We're all submitted There's to Jesus order. Christ. There's order. And Leviathan doesn't want you to follow order. He wants you to be puffed up and in your own way, mm -hmm. but that's not the right way. That's not God's way. You know, Amen. we have free will, but we want our will to be God. We want God's will to be our will. We want to take on his way, his will, what he wants us to do. Because clearly, if we could get it right, we would have, we knew what, what to do when to get it right, we've already done it. That's a fact. You know what I mean? So, uh, so that was, you know, what we dealt with. And that was what we have on, um, you know, cracking the crocodile. So that crocodile crocked the day, uh, cracked the day, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know what I, mean? so uh, I just wanted to uh, close in prayer. And, and for, if you've been dealing with the Leviathan, I just want to pray for you uh, for, for, for Leviathan's lies to be loose. So father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, asking for forgiveness and protection. We repent for any and every manifestation of haughtiness, pride, stubbornness, stiff neck postures, and the like. Forgive us for allowing any corrupt communication to come out of our mouths. We break any and all agreement with Leviathan's twisted influence against our mind and heart. Forgive us, Lord, in Jesus' name for entertaining Leviathan's thoughts and allowing ourselves to fall prey to this marine demon's hard-hearted agenda in Jesus' name because it's a marine spirit. Father, help us to crucify our flesh, our flesh so that our carnal nature does not rise up and lead us in Jesus name. Help us to be led by your spirit and your spirit alone so that we don't fall into Leviathan's traps, judging, criticizing, complaining and fleeing when things get difficult. Lord, help us to shut the voice of pride out of our life once and for all, resisting it at at its onset. Lord Jesus, thank you in Jesus name. Lord, help us to take every thought captive with the word of God in Jesus mighty name. Now we take authority over Leviathan's witchcraft in our life, mm -hmm. released through the haughtiness, haughty stance of others, Lord, in Jesus name. And we break the powers of Leviathan's fruit in our life from sickness and disease to confusion and exhaustion. We stand against the forces of hell Leviathan has released into our life through the spiritual atmosphere in our city or our cities that we've traveled to. Help us to stand and withstand against sudden Leviathan's attacks attacks in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name. Lord, we thank you for even allowing us to go up here, Lord. And we thank you for the word going forth, Lord. And we thank you that people are able to receive and hear father God. And we pray for our listeners, Lord. We pray for our leaders, Lord, in Jesus name. Lord, would you help us and pour into us, Lord, and build us up, Lord, and cover us and protect us, Lord, from all plans, schism, attacks, plots, ploys of the enemies, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, loose your spirit, loose your fruit, Lord, in our lives, Father God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we humble ourselves, Father God, in Jesus' name. And we thank you for your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. Thank you for being able to repent. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for who you are, God, and your forgiveness, Lord, and giving us chance after chance to get it right in Jesus' name. So, Lord, thank you that this has gone forth. Thank you that this was great. Thank you that this was true. Thank you it was honest. Thank you we were able to release this, Lord. And we ask that you go forth and you bless all the podcasts speaking truth in the name of Jesus, yes, God. God. And we thank you. We come against any hindrance, Lord, for from that's trying anything that's trying to hinder the truth, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. So, thank you, God. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. 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 And amen. So, 
that wraps up the second episode of the Kingdom Love Talk, episode two. Cracking the crocodile. Cracking the crocodile, defeating the Leviathan spirit. Yes. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, thank you guys for commenting, for liking, for sharing, for you know, subscribing to the channel. Glory to God. God bless y'all in abundance and abundance and abundance and abundance. And before I go, I want to leave you guys with Proverbs 8 and 13. It says, if anyone respects and fears God, he will hate evil. For wisdom hates pride, arrogance, corruption, and deceit of every kind. So, Amen. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Thank Amen. you. Yes, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, this was Kingdom Love Talk. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe now. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share, like, comment. We love you guys. And we will see you guys next time. Whoop, whoop.